Hi, friends. This is Miss Stacy from the Youth Services Department of the Fayetteville Public Library, and this is preschool story time for ages three to five. Let's sing our hello song. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends, it's story time. We clap and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With our friends, it's story time. We wave and sing hello. We wink and sing hello. We wink and sing hello. With our friends, it's story time. We wink and sing hello. I'm so glad you joined me today. I've got a couple announcements before we really begin. And that is that the library will be closed this Friday and Saturday for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Following that, the Youth Services Department will be on a programming break from January 2nd to January 16th. So the next story time that you'll see after this week will be on January 18th after Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And when we come back on January 18th, you'll notice that our schedule will be a little bit different. Story times will be at new times, and you can check out those times on our event calendar. In addition to the new times, we're also gonna have a limited in-person audience. And the way that'll work is that we will have a certain number of tickets available when we open first thing in the morning. And the people who get here and get a ticket will be able to join us for in-person story time. Won't that be fun? I'm really looking forward to it. So our story time today is all about the season that we're currently in. We just got a new season like a week ago. Does anybody remember what season it is right now? It's winter. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it because it's been warm, but it is. And today it's been rainy, and in the wintertime we can have snow and all kinds of fun weather. So if you wanted to sign we uh, winter in American Sign Language, it's very similar to the sign for cold, and that's you like make a fist like this, and then you shiver, like, ooh, that's winter in American Sign Language. Let's read our first story. Our first story today is called Owl Moon. It's written by Jane Yolen, and the pictures are by John Shaner. And I love this story, and you'll see this big gold circle right here. That tells us that this book won the Caldecott Medal. So it's a very good book. It's a little bit older, so you may have heard it before, but it's a classic. It was late one winter night long past my bedtime when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright, the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew long and low like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out trains and dogs for a real long time, and when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Paul made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, hoo, 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 hoo. 
the sound of a great horned owl. See Paul making it? Again, he called out, and then again. After each call, he was silent, and for a moment, we both listened. But there was no answer. Paul shrugged, and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back, and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was wider than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf over my mouth and listened hard. And then Pa called, hoo, 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 I listened and looked so hard my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again. But before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Pa almost smiled. Then he called back, hoo, 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 just as if he and the owl were talking about supper or about the woods or the moon or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths, the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Look at that pretty owl. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Paul said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Paul says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. Isn't that so pretty? I love that book. It's one of my favorite books. Okay, let's sing a little song and have some fun. All right, this one you may recognize. They sing it a lot in Baby Bookworms, and we're going to do a slight variation of bumping up and down in my little red wagon because we're doing a winter story time. We're going to say that we're bumping up and down in our little blue sleds. Are you ready? All right.
Bumping up and down in my little blue sled, bumping up and down in my little blue sled, bumping up and down in my little blue sled. Won't you be my darling? Snow's coming down on my little blue sled. Snow's coming down on my little blue sled. Snow's coming down on my little blue sled. Won't you be my darling? Waving to my friends on my little blue sled. Waving to my friends on my little blue sled. Waving to my friends on my little blue sled. Won't you be my darling? That's a fun one, isn't it? Did you bump and down? I hope so. All right, let's read our next story. This is a fun one. I really like it. The Magical Snowman by Katherine Walters and Allison Edgson. And I love the illustrations in this one. Look how cute the little bunny is and his little blue sweater. And then the snowman, he sparkles. All right. It was a clear, sparkling winter's day. Little Rabbit had been busy all morning heaping snow to make a snowman. Good work, Little Rabbit, said Daddy. Could you finish it later, though? I need you to find some berries for our tea. Look how happy Little Rabbit is. Snowman will be sad if I leave him now, Little Rabbit said. He'll be fine, said Daddy gently. He's just a snowman. He isn't real. He is real, said Little Rabbit. Of course he's real. He's my friend. Oh, they're so cute. Daddy smiled as he gave Little Rabbit a kiss. Don't go too far, he said. I won't, said Little Rabbit. Mmm, one for the basket and one for me, he sang as he skipped down the lane. Soon his paws were sticky with purple juice. Look, he's eating the berries. Little Rabbit was having so much fun, he hardly noticed the snow beginning to fall. A robin flitted ahead of him and he followed it, dancing through the drifting snowflakes and bare trees. Then the robin flew away. Little Rabbit stopped and looked around. He wasn't sure which way he had come. The swirling snow made everything look strange. What will I do, he cried. How will I get home? Oh, that doesn't seem like a very good feeling at all. I would hate to feel lost like a little rabbit. As if in answer, a soft light sparkled through the trees. Smiling through the falling snow was his very own snowman. I knew you were real, said Little Rabbit. But snowman, I was all on my own. Not all alone, smiled snowman. I was there too, little friend. I was always there for you. Snowman dusted flakes from Little Rabbit's fur and lifted him onto his shoulders. I'll take you home, he said. Hold on tight. They whizzed down the hill. Whoosh! Look at him going really fast. And landed in a snowy heap by a frozen stream. Whoomp! Here we go, Snowman laughed as he held Little Rabbit's paw. The world whisked by in a shimmer of silver frost. It felt as if they were flying. I'm coming home, Daddy, Little Rabbit called. Whee! Look at him skating. Doesn't that look fun? Suddenly, Snowman skidded to a halt at the bottom of a hill. We'll have to walk now, he said, as he swung Little Rabbit into his soft arms. Are we nearly there yet? <sighs> Yawned Little Rabbit. Not far now, said Snowman. Meanwhile, Daddy Rabbit was hurrying through the whirling snow. He was very worried, and he shivered in the icy wind. Little Rabbit, he called. Little Rabbit, where are you? 
Oh man, he does not look very happy. He's very worried. Daddy, cried Little Rabbit when he heard his call. He leaped from the snowman's arms and bounded up the garden. Daddy Rabbit swept him up and hugged him tight, forgetting all about the berries. Thank goodness you're safe, he said. I was so worried about you all alone. Aww. I wasn't alone, said Little Rabbit. Snowman took care of me. Snowman stood quietly in the winter darkness. Little Rabbit smiled at him, and he saw Snowman was smiling too. The end. Isn't that sweet? Snowman rescued Little Rabbit. He sure was magical. All right. Let's investigate what's going on back here. We just read a book, The Magical Snowman. What are these? They're snowmen too. Let's sing a song about them. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Five little snowmen. All right. Five little snowmen, short and fat. Here is their scarf, here is their hat. When the sun comes out, they cannot stay. Slowly one just melts away. Oh, that one melted away. How many do we have now? We have one, two, three, four. Four little snowmen, short and fat. Here is their scarf, here is their hat. When the sun comes out, they cannot stay. Slowly one just melts away. It melted. How many now? One, two, three. Three little snowmen, short and fat. Here is their scarf, here is their hat. When the sun comes out, they cannot stay. Slowly one just melts away. Oh man, they keep melting. How many now? One, two. Two little snowmen, short and fat. Here is their scarf, here is their hat. When the sun comes out, they cannot stay. Slow. Only one just melts away. All right, how many now? One, just one snowman. One little snowman, short and fat. Here is his scarf, here is his hat. When the sun comes out, he cannot stay. Slowly he just melts away. Now we have no snowman left. Oh, I guess our song is over. <laughs> well, that was kind of a fun one, huh? So now I have something to show you. What's this? Has anybody seen one of these before? It's a snow globe. And if you look very carefully and up close, you probably can't see from home. There's a snow village in there. Oh, it looks magical. Look at that. Oh, that's really fun. And there's a snow globe in our next book, too. Let's read it. This one is called Snow Globe Wishes by Aaron Dealey and pictures by Claire Shorrock. Oh, look at all the fun winter things. There's ice skates and, oh, what's that, like hot chocolate and sleds and snowflakes. Ooh fun. Look how pretty the pictures. I love this book. The pictures are so pretty. Lights go out. Fierce clouds blow in. Garlands fly on frozen wind. Ooh, it's a winter storm. Lost connections, phones, computers. Bundled, homeward bound com commuters. Everybody's going home because it's a storm. 
Traffic slows, roads disappear beneath the worst storm of the year. Ooh. Picnic dinners, candlelight, darkness draws us close tonight. Look, the lights have gone out, so they're having to use a fire and candles, and they're having a picnic in the living room. Doesn't that look fun? What's happening now? What's he bringing? It's a blanket, and the dog has a blanket. Oh, she's moving a chair. They're putting the blanket over the chair. Blanket forts, crawl in, scoot over. Kitten purrs, me too, barks Rover. <laughs> they're all in a blanket fort. Snow globe wishes, close your eyes. Snow plows rumble lullabies. Look, they're sleeping in the blanket fort. What do you think she's wishing on her snow globe? Let's see. Then slowly stretching. <sighs> Morning yawns. <laughs> Look, brilliant skies. Rose-colored dawn, wake up, a whisper from the snow. Do you hear its soft hello? There's her snow globe on the windowsill. Look how pretty it is outside. Magic sparkles, beckons, swirls. Come outside, dear boys and girls. Children hear it best, they say. But what if on this snow globe day, families shake their busy lives, heavy doors fling open wide. Look, everybody's going outside. And out they go, ones, twos, threes, fours, and cities, towns, and right next door, outside to winter's wonderland. Look at all the fun things they're doing. They're sledding and building a snowman. Oh, it's a snowball fight. They're making snow angels. Oh, how fun, shoveling snow and hiding in the snow and sledding and playing together and making a snowman here and pulling a sled there and the dog is running. Oh my gosh, it looks so fun. Who will be the first to grab a hand that grabs a hand and then another? Neighbors, strangers, sisters, brothers, what if, dear friends, on this snow globe day, everyone comes out to play? Wouldn't that be so fun if everyone went out to play? To share a smile, to catch the spirit, laugh until the world can hear it, and pass it on as bright eyes glisten. Do you hear what they hear? Listen. How pretty. Peace on earth, right now, right here. Peace for all throughout the year. Look, they're inside a snow globe. Isn't that really cool? And there we have more winter things. That's such a pretty book. I love it so much. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Now, Let's sing a little about our weather that we get in winter. Sometimes we get snow, sometimes. Sometimes we get rain, like today. Sometimes the sun comes out. Sometimes there are leaves falling. We have a lot on the ground still from fall, especially if we haven't raked them, like me. <laughs> so if you do have a scarf, you can grab it, or a blanket, or a towel, some piece of cloth, and we're gonna sing a song, okay? We're gonna start out and say, snow on the ground, snow on the trees, snow on the roof, but not on me, and <laughs> throw it up in the air. That's fun. Now let's do rain. Rain on the ground, rain on the trees, rain on the roof, but not on me. <laughs> now let's do sun. Sun on the ground, sun on the trees, sun on the roof, but not on me. <laughs> okay, our last one, let's do leaves. Leaves on the ground, leaves on the trees, 
leaves on the roof, but not on me. <laughs> Good job, friends. That's always a fun one. I like to throw the scarf around. And now let's talk about our craft for the day. I had a really special patron help me with this craft. We outline hands of Miss Ellie. She comes here a lot. And so we made a winter handcraft penguin. And the way we did that, we used black cardstock, white printer paper, and orange cardstock. I started out by tracing her hands and cutting those out. I rounded the bottom so they looked like little penguin feet. And then I cut a triangle nose. I cut an oval out of the white paper for the tummy. And then I took a black piece of cardstock. You can see it straight on the bottom. And I rounded the corners and rounded the top so that it had the shape of a penguin. Then I took another piece of cardstock and I cut these wings. Just in the shape looks like this. I positioned them on the back side so that the points would meet up with the bottom so it could stand on by its, all by itself. And then I glued those on to look like leaves, or wings. I took some big googly eyes and glued those on too. But if you don't have googly eyes, you can just draw those on. And that is how you make a winter handcraft penguin. It was a lot of fun to do. All right, friends, I am so glad you've joined me for story time today. Let's sing our goodbye song. We wave and sing goodbye. We wave and sing goodbye. With our friends at story time, we wave and sing goodbye. We clap and sing goodbye. We clap and sing goodbye. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing goodbye. We wink and sing goodbye. We wink and sing goodbye. With our friends at story time, we wink and sing goodbye. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>